I'm hoping this comes through again. I'm not using my headphone and a uh, mic. I just got into a recent conversation on one of the videos uh, in the comment section of one of the videos posted by the Truth Group. Um, basically, they're calling atheists fools by taking that snippet, uh, you know, the, uh, the, of a Bible quote, the fool hath said in his heart, period. They don't continue with the quote mentioning that, you know, these fools do abominable works, none of them do good. So I just wanted to point out that they were quote mining their own Bible. Quote mining is a big, major problem with uh, theists. They like they do it all the time to try to support any arguments they may have. Of course, quote mining, when exposed, often undermines a person's position. Um, and that's what I was doing. I was exposing their quote mine because obviously there have been atheists and non-believers that do enormously good works. Uh, and then, as we're going through this in the conversation, the people that commented back to me were saying, well, these aren't good works because they don't match God's standard. Um, what? So are we saying that, you know, nothing a human does is a good work? Then they tried to explain, that, oh, this is this is in human terms, they're good, but in God's terms, they're not. So now we have moral relativism from these people who normally claim that there's a moral absolutism in the world, that human morals are good for humans, but they're not good for God. And God's morals, well, whatever. Um, it doesn't really make sense to me. Not because I don't understand their arguments, but simply because their arguments are fallacious. Uh, they're basically moving the goalpost over and over and over again. A very common theistic tactic whenever you bring up anything that conflicts with their ideologies. Either people can do good things or we can't. And if we can't, and something like charity is then no different from homicide. Something like uh, providing joy to others is no different than providing others with suffering. So there's either a difference or there isn't. Now, I've struggled with this moral issue before uh, in regards to, you know, why do humans have moral um, tendencies? Why do we tend to be a moral animal? I come to, real to the realization, studying things like uh, primatology and social animal behavior, that our moral systems are an evolutionary heritage. In other words, we live in a community. The individuals, that, the individuals of that community must adhere to certain rules and guidelines for that community to remain coherent. <laughs> and that's where we get our moral structures from. If we didn't, well then, uh, our communities wouldn't survive and they would have become extinct and our species likely would have become extinct as well. So I adhere to what I call evolutionary, excuse me, evolutionary moralism. In other words, moral tendencies driven by evolutionary heritage that tend to benefit the outcome of the community and the individual, both. Um, of course, in individuals that go against that moral tendency, we call them bad people. We say they've done immoral works. Uh, people who commit homicide, for instance. Um, would be a bad person because first of all they're killing a member of the community and they are threatening the other members of the community by their actions. People who do good works are those people who commit actions that improve the community, support the community, and strengthen the community as well as their own personal selves. From an evolutionary standpoint, we can actually say there is a form of moral absolutism. Of course, it's not given to us by a god, but it's derived from our evolutionary heritage. I found it interesting that I'm more of a moral absolutist, being an atheist, than these uh, Christian commentators on the Truth Group video, which I'll be linking. I got the right direction, that side, because <laughs> they may not accept my video. We know how. Christians tend to be, um, and I'm not talking all Christians, I'm talking specifically those type of Christians, the ones that are out there being, evangel uh, being evangelists and spreading all sorts of 
misrepresentations about other people's position. I actually had a Christian on that comment page ask why I even cared about morals, because atheists don't have morals. Really. All atheists have morals. They're derived, again, like I said, through our evolutionary heritage and learned through our communities. Um, and there's a great variation of morals. So, you know, even though I may be a moral absolutist in the evolutionary sense, I'm still a moral relativist when it comes to different cultures. Now, that being said, I was also it was also said to me, well, you're just coming here and fulfilling a self-fulfilling prophecy that, you know, atheists are persecuted somehow by Christians. Well, no, I went there because we were insulted by Christians. Now, it's true, there's a lot of atheists that have insulted Christians, but it's usually a reactionary thing. Christians will say something first like, oh, atheists are immoral, and then you have someone like Coughlin, who is funny as hell, come out with this huge rant. Um, and sometimes I can't tell if he's doing it completely as a comedy skit to make a point, or if he's actually upset. I bet sometimes it's one of, yeah, I bet it's both um, on occasion. But, you know, they insulted us first, as a group. And they don't expect to have a response? That's arrogant in the extreme. And, uh, and it's pretty typical for these type of uh, Christians. Again, I want to I want to make a point that I'm referring to these type of evangel evangelistic Christians versus, you know, Christians that just let let people be follow their own faith and let people be. So, that being said, um, and I'm kind of rattling this off from the top of my head here, and there's a plane flying over. I hate it when that happens when I'm doing a video. So, which is it? Are there absolute morals? And we can either attain those morals or we can't. And if we can't, then nothing we do is... Kind of like this, kind of like the Starlight Theater um, in Balboa Park here in San Diego. They have their little shows, and when a plane flies over, usually a jet, they just stop. Okay, might have been a helicopter, but I mean, either we have a moral system that we can abide by, and therefore we can judge good works from bad or the moral system is set far too high where we cannot do good from bad but we're stuck simply doing the bad and everything we do is bad. If that's the case then nothing we do really matters. Which of course is one of their arguments that you know we can only come to salvation through the Christ. But then if we can only come through uh, come to salvation through the Christ and nothing that we do matters in regards to that. We simply believe in Christ and you know swear allegiance to Him and pray to Him and all that. Then we are technically able to do anything we want. How immoral is that? I mean, you you can't complain that someone is uh, has been torturing little children and call it immoral because, well, providing little children with an education and making them, you know, giving them something to have fun with is also immoral by those standards. So, let's go out and torture little children because it makes no difference? No. I don't accept any of their arguments. They're internally inconsistent and the best evidence for a invalid position is it's is it being internally inconsistent? So, sorry, Christians at the Truth Group and your and your subscribers, but you're way off the mark here. And if this is your idea of morality, I am certainly glad I have no part in it. <laughs>